What's up guys and welcome back to another episode of Career Mode. This is episode number 87. We started these stuff on the back of back-to-back -back draws with Inter and Sassuolo. As you can see, one game before the winter break. We are five points clear and still undefeated, but... As we know, the three teams directly below us all on the same amount of points. Samuel Ricky has just gone down as well. So another injury to one of our CMs with Grimoire Reyes down too. So right now, this is the this is the tricky period for Juventus right now. We're about to go into the winter break. It's going to be loads of fixtures in January. The Copper Italian is going to come around. Lots of big league games as well. This is a big one here. Final game of December. Taking on AS Roma. One of those three teams chasing us for the title this season as Mourinho's men would come to the Allianz Stadium. So back to back games by the draw and heading into the game again missing two of our regular starting trio of midfielders. I mention it all the time, you know, form in career mode is so, so important. And the fact of the matter is, unless you are an unbelievable player, you're going to go into bad form at some point. We all do. No matter how good your team is, no matter how good of a player you are, at some point you're going to go in bad form. The, the question is, how how long is it going to last? Because you, know, you know, the longer it does go on, the harder it is to break out of it. The quicker you can end that poor run of form, the quicker you can get yourself back on track. So this is a huge game here against Roma on the back of the draws against Inter away and Sassuolo at home. We took the lead for a you-know-who, Dusan Vlahovic with another going for that golden boot with Roma trying to hit back here, 34 minutes in there with Do Just that. Wouldn't you just know who got the goal? Paolo Dybala. Yep, so many years at Juventus after moving on from Palermo. The Argentine four got that big move to Roma uh, in the summer, of course, for this season coming into 21 to 22. Uh, sorry, 22 to 23, sorry. Um, Paolo Dybala. I saw the um, the intro uh, for, for Dybala, you know, the uh, the fan reception he got. Such a such a big move and a, a really big statement from AS Roma to sign him from a division rival as well. Paolo Di Barda coming back here. I knew he was going to score. I knew he was going to score. I checked pre-game. I saw he was still at Roma in the save. Heading into this one. Back-to-back -back games without a win. I just knew Di Barda was going to get a goal. He did. And Roma led. Really frustrating game as well. Because I was playing quite well to be fair. I was getting some good chances. Just couldn't take them. We were still tied at 1-1. And then three minutes after the restart here. Weston McKenney taken down from behind. And another... Injury. Joshua Kimmich flies in, moving on from my Bayern Munich side in the summer. Another injury for one of my CMs. McKenny goes down and eventually I will take him off. Free kick though as Dusan Vlahovic stands over it. And from 25 metres, puts it over the bar. <laughs> Oh, Duzan, you ain't docs, mate. Did you see him on my player episode? Uh, God, if you if you haven't caught up yet, I uh, well, I'm going to spoil it for you, I'm afraid. Um, yes, for those of you that have been waiting for a couple of years for me to score a free kick, I did it. I did it in my my player save. It was a worldie as well, but I couldn't do it there with Vlahovic, and in the end, I had to settle for a draw. Frustrating game. Had a high amount of shots in the game. The XG wasn't the best, but I just can take my chances. But again, another injury. Weston McKenney breaks his toe. He's out for three months alongside Bruno Guimarães. We know that Ricky is down until midway through January as well. So three CMs are down as we go into the winter break. We remain top of the table. We remain undefeated, but as you can see, me, uh, sorry, a Roma and Inter still five points behind, but Milan closed the gap to three. One game to go before the official halfway stage. Vlahovic, top of the charts right now for both goals and assists as well, 18 and 15 respectively, and Donnarumma still leading the way in the race for the Golden Glove, but slowing down with Juventus, and we knew it was going to happen at some point. Like I said a moment ago, you're always going to go into bad form. It's always is going to happen and as I mentioned as well the longer it goes on the harder it is to get out of it and snap out of it as well so big missed opportunity there against Roma leading big missed opportunity at home Sassuolo which we should have won as well and that is now three straight draws for Juventus so as January would arrive just over 10 million pounds in the transfer budget question is will we do anything three of our central midfielders are down with injuries we haven't won in our last three. Do we decide to make a major move in January? Possibly sell a Bergvine, perhaps, and, uh, and look to, to bring in a couple more reinforcements? Or do we keep the squad as it is 
and trust that we'll get ourselves out of this poor run of form. Well, first game of January, Udinese away from home, and it was the perfect start. Five minutes in, Federico Chiesa gives us the lead, and we have the breakthrough. But the question was, could we hold on this time after surrendering it and that, uh, in that game against Rome when we were leading and surrendered the three points? Well, 22 minutes in, Donnarumma makes a fantastic save on the 1-1, one -one, going for that golden glove and another clean sheet as we were still leading by one. And 42 minutes in, and a pretty cagey first half. I'm not going to lie, I wasn't playing my best in this game. A little bit nervous despite taking the early lead. We will get a cushion. Duzan Vlahovic with another. Going for that golden boot. Pops in for about 12 yards out. 2 0 Juventus and breathing room. Heading in to the dressing room at halftime for the first time in several games. And in the second half, literally the perfect start as well. Udinese get a ball away right from kickoff. You can't be doing that against this lightning quick and really ruthless front three. Vlahovic step overs around the last man, bends it into the far corner for his brace. Udinese nil, Juve three, and finally I knew we were going to return to winning ways in the league after none in our last three. 30 minutes to go, looking to make it for Vlahovic and heart of everything as he always is, finds Chiesa, and the boys get braces each as Bergvine watches on, feeling left out. Yep, 4-0 Juventus, 2 for Chiesa, 2 for Vlahovic and back to winning ways after three straight draws. I said it in a recent episode, it's, I swear there's always one player I have in like a three-headed attack that never seems to get as much credit as the other two. Chiesa's unbelievable, second most assist this season, gets a brace in this game, but Vlahovic of course is the main man. Oh yeah, and Bergwijn's pretty good as well, isn't it? But uh, there was a bid for Bergwijn, interesting enough, after the game here, Forest, Nottingham Forest putting in a bid for Steven Bergvine, wanting to take him back to the Premier League. Massive bid for our Dutch winger. I think it was 62 mil for Bergvine, but despite the fact he is sort of the, uh, the, 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 the lesser known of the front three, if you will, in terms of, um, you know, uh, appreciation. He is still a big player for me. He's come big this season, a few games. He's still got quite a few goals and assists as well. So, no, I'm, I'm keeping Bergwijn here. I know he's 30. We could possibly sell, maybe make one or two investments. I talked about it in that game there against Sudanese, but I'm I'm keeping Bergwijn here. I still love the Dutch winger, and he's staying on that right flank for me. It was a bit for Ribeiro as well, our Brazilian new gen. Not much game time for Ribeiro this season, but squad depth is really important. We talked about it at length in the last episode, and you know, right now, with three injuries to our CMs, you know, I'm, I'm I'm not taking a gamble. I am not reducing the squad size if I can help it. So, third and final game of today's episode, first Derby de la Mole of the season. Torino at home. Oh, sorry, second uh, Derby de la Mole of the season. Torino at home. We thrashed them away 4-0. So coming back to the Allianz Stadium for this one, I was thinking, hmm, probably going to be a banker for us to make a back-to-back -back wins. Well, a Nottingham Forest hero had different ideas. Brennan Johnson gave Torino the lead. And with the January window opening, and if you read the title, Nottingham Forest Hero Returns, you're probably thinking, has Doxy Boy signed Rodri Brown? Is he signed Brennan Johnson? No, nope, but he scored against me for Torino. Torino take the lead. We got back on level turn straight afterwards, and then they restored it. And we were getting carved open very, very easily. Facundo Farias made it 3-1, and 28 minutes in, the Allianz Stadium was shocked silent. Derby de Alamorley, first one at home this season, won 4-0 in the reverse fixture, and at half-time, on the back of a 4-0 win at Udinese, we were 3-1 down to Torino, and we could have been 4-1 down as well. We were still leading by two, but we were lucky. Oh, sorry, we were still trading by two. We were lucky to only be trading by two. And why is that, I hear you ask? Because my defence in this game was as scattered as it could get. Five minutes after the restart, and he got another. Facundo Farias made it 4-1 Torino. And you know those games where form but goes out the window, ability of teams means practically nothing, and it's just an absolute shocker. Well, this is the first one of the season. 
Yes, we lost to Mönchengladbach in the Champions League group opener, but I wouldn't say that was that much of a shock considering my record in European group openers and also the fact that we were, of course, starting the season off looking, let's just say, a little bit far from the finished project. But uh, I did not see this coming. Final score in the Derby de Alamole. Juventus 2, Torino 5. There's your Acker breaker right there, but I'll say this right now. I present the highlights package very fairly, and let me tell you this. It could have been worse! It could have been worse. I was shocking and torn apart. 5-2. First loss in the season in the league. And that five-point gap where we sat at the top of the tree and undefeated has now gone as it's cut to two by Roma and Inter and three by Milan. Just one win in our last five in the league. And Juve, stronghold at the top, has completely gone. But that will end today's episode of Karima, guys. Big fan of watching. Hope you have enjoyed it. If you have done, please do drop a like. Much love to you all. Have a fantastic day. And I will see you for the next episode of Career Mode very soon.